Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Barber's Arms, episode 91. We're climbing up to that big 100. It's Friday, the 2nd of September. We've got a big international show coming up tonight. We're going to go over to Texas to interview an amazing lady called Lauren Davis. And then we're going to scoot down to Australia. And we're going to be interviewing one of the up and coming rising stars there in Australia, Mark Rabone. That's tonight on episode 91. And this is brought to you tonight by the uh, fantastic wall cordless senior this fantastic it's my favorite my this is a heavy duty clipper our most powerful uh, cordless motor with a precision fade blade that uh, is just the dogs available at wall.co.uk and also across all our wholesale partners across nationwide without further ado please welcome my co-host here on 91 mr gary machin Ah, thank you very much, Mr. Simon Shaw. It's a pleasure to be here. Two weeks. It seems longer than that. It feels like we haven't been on for a while, but it's actually, now we're doing it every couple of weeks. You've been on holiday. We've had a mad one. So it's, uh, last time we had 66.2 thousand views. Thank you, everybody who's watching and who's been involved in the show. Obviously, thank you to Anthony and Colin for coming on the show last time. It is a really memorable show. I thought it was a really good one. It was uh, very interesting. Uh, and a few things been going on this week, mate. You've had a busy one and you've been on holiday as well. Yeah, really beautiful time over in um, uh, Terramino in Sicily. Family time was beautiful. Um, I, uh, I think I did maybe an hour and a half's work. Glanced at a few emails, but I, I had one Zoom call one afternoon when I got a bit boat sick. I had a bit of a sickness on a, a boat that my son-in-law hired for a day and I got off at lunchtime and got a taxi back to... Uh, <laughs> Were you a bit bilious? You, you have a bit yeah, of a... me and my daughter had a nice glass of wine night before and I felt a little bit iffy in it. Well, private hired, there were only us as a family on it. It was beautiful. And you're stopping at all these little ports and harbours and swimming and I didn't get off the boat. And then he said, oh, do you, the, the captain said, do you want a beer? I thought, well, yeah, I'll have a beer to see if I can feel a, a little bit better. And then the beer took me about an hour to drink it till they'd, they'd, they'd got jet skis arriving to the boat. It was, it was fantastic, but I, I felt a little bit dodgy. But, wow, what a place um, Sicily is. Beautiful. Got some great memories. And uh, I think it fetches you back. We get so busy in life, and I think everybody will resonate with this sometimes. You know, to do that um, and to have that full eight days there with my daughter and my son-in-law and my three grandkids was uh, fantastic. So I really enjoyed it. Recharged the batteries, got back on Sunday evening, went to watch uh, FC United. Alex came back after injury on Monday. Not the result they wanted, but he, uh, he got 45 minutes under his belt. And then back to work, back to Kent. It's really busy from now through till mid-November. I don't think there's uh, many days off. As I keep getting told, though, by a lot of co-workers and a lot of co-colleagues, uh, you get paid a lot of money, so stop fucking moaning. Do you ever yeah. get that? Do you ever well, get that? You no, know, you know, I, I, they don't say that to me because it's just, uh, just I try and play that down, you see. I don't, I don't get paid a lot of money if anybody asks. <laughs> anyway, just, get, you know, just thinking about you going away with, with, with family. It doesn't sound very often, that doesn't. When you get all the family like that together, I mean, Beautiful. the kids are with you for so long and then, you know, you start getting away on your own. But I miss them, I do. I mean, my kids have only just, stopped, well, Millie's still coming with us, but Jesse's 26, Jake's 23. I miss them coming away with us. I think it's, it's amazing. Very, I think you're very lucky when, when they I still want to go away with you. I mean, with partners and stuff over years, you know, you, you and, and while Alex is his girl, they spend much time in pools and stuff. I, I'm a, I kind of like to have a, you know, a nice couple of hours on a sun lounger and then have a bit of lunch, a few beers, get ready, go out for a night. But I spent a lot of time in pool and uh, right, Rhea and Zyra were amazing swimmers. And, you know, just, it was just, just magic. Really, you know, anybody who does it, you know, you're thinking, well, we do that all the time. Um, for me, it was absolutely fantastic. Well, a lot's been going on while you've been sunning yourself, mate, anyway. I think we're having a new Prime Minister, aren't we, this this week, this weekend. we get Monday comes out. It's been all all done and dusty now. Five o'clock was the cut-off, so we'll be having a new, you know, it'll be all over the news. Kids are going back. That's manic. Ridiculous time of year for, for us barbers. And, you know, there's stuff going on all the time. But, I mean... 
you see the papers about, you know, all the downside, but, you know, there's, you've got to think positive all the time, haven't we? You know what I mean? It's, uh, you got to keep going. Um, you know, things that, that, that are happening and out of our control, really. It's, I know we said this in previous, but uh, we've just got to keep going and keep keep fighting the fight. Talking about that and talking about beer, got a nice little cider on with us tonight. We've got the Thatcher's Katie. This will be a good one for you. 7.4, made from a single apple, this. It's a, it's a good one. Our agent's favourite, this is. He, he, he likes this, so very smooth. And it's, you know, I've just, just been saying to producer uh, on, the, on the way before we came home uh, and got in front of the, the monitor, 22 degrees on my way home in, in the car, quarter past seven at night, 22 degrees. It's unbelievable. Got droughts all over the country. What's happening, man? I know. I think when I got back on um, the Sunday, Taxi driver said to us on the way back, he was like, Yeah, there's like horse pike fans in South Yorkshire, and it all oh, it's been read out, out there, but there's no horse pike bands in Sicily. <laughs> We're shit, aren't we? <laughs> we just can't cope with, with, with the stuff that's happening. Lots of stuff happening, I think, since we last on. Um, uh, congratulations to everybody who got through to British Edison Awards. I know that's uh, a big thing that, and I always look now when kids go back to school. And for us, you know, yesterday we're a full day on Salon International. We've got some great stuff happening for Salon International. Um, you know, the, the Barber of the Year, Barber Shop of the Year. Um, this is all happening. Um, you know, lots of entries coming in. Um, and it's the business end of the year. You know, lots yeah. of rewards. I think kids go back to school. You know, people focus on Q4. Uh, brands will, will have a big push for Christmas coming up. So for me, this is the start of the what I call the hectic season. I've got two more trips in Bangkok and Dubai coming up and then concentrate on, you know, getting back to London um, for the, you know, the last part of the, the year. Um, it, it just seems to be shows and awards now, doesn't it, all the way through. We've got Salon North, which is, I think that's the end of September, isn't it? Salon International's a bit earlier this time as well, isn't it? Is it 8, 9, 10, something like yeah, that? Yeah, 8, 9, 10. So um, I know they, they had some heavy pushes over Bank of the Weekend on tickets and registering for tickets. So great show, big show in the UK and Europe, really. I think we'll see a lot of foreign visitors travelling that's missed selling the last two or three years, like you came back last year. But I don't think people are still confident travelling. But I think that that will be well attended. There's lots of shows abroad as well. Obviously, the one in Dubai that I'm going to. And you've got Cosmopop in Singapore as well. So... There's lots of big shows back end of the year and obviously here in the UK, the calendar starting off in a couple of weeks um, where I am the compare of the Shabba Awards. Uh, congratulations to Joanne Reed and everybody at the Shabba Awards. Uh, record ticket sales sold out, 960 tickets sold for Shabba Awards. So, hey, it's in a couple of weeks. It's next weekend. Uh, next weekend, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to have a milkshake diet all next week to try and fit into a suit I bought. Um, so that fucking really hard next week. Uh, we, I'm in London most of the week. We're doing our photo shoot for Salon. Um, and it's going to be a busy week and it's going to be tough trying to keep like the calories down all next week. Um, lots of exciting stuff happening tonight. We've got a great show though tonight, an international show. You know, going over to America to start with to interview a really interesting lady who's the co-owner of the Gents Place in Texas. And I think she's a, a judge as well from what I can gather. Not um, yet, not not quite. She's she's a candidate. She's put herself in the ring. I think she's uh, she's she's trying it. I think. I don't we'll think find out a little bit about her as well, and also as well, we're going to then go to Australia to interview a young man who I met out there when I was working out there, Matt Rabone, who is an expat. He's from Birmingham originally, big Aston Villa fan, but I think he's been out in Australia 15, 16 years plus. Um, he's got the Esquire male grooming shop and he's a wall ambassador as well so we're going to get um, Mark on I keep saying young man he's not a young man but he's a young man in terms of presenting years well he's, he's a young man compared to you got it. yeah compared to me an old attitude you know I did an interview um, just before I went to Sicily and it's coming out um, in a few weeks and uh, the interviewer is quite uh, 
abrupt with some of his questions. I'm going to say how he interviewed me. It was quite deep in some of the questions that he asked me. And he asked me something about, you know, Lifetime Achievement Awards that you've won. And I said, I don't really like him because he seems that you're towards the back end of your career when you get a Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'm only fucking halfway through. I've got oh, yeah. when, you, when, you get, when you get a Lifetime Achievement Award in any other sector, you're usually dead. Well, yeah, I've got so much more to give. I'm only halfway through. So get ready. All our competitors and oppositions at Salon, get ready this year. It's going to be our biggest and our best. We've got an amazing outline. We've got a, a, a brand new team member that we're going to announce just before Salon. And uh, that's it's going to be a biggie. So uh, we can't wait to hit that really hard. And uh, welcome everybody back. Who's going to come back in there? Thousands to Salon this year. All our foreign visitors as well. It's going to be exciting. So uh, as you said, at the top of the bill, tonight's show sponsored by Cordless Senior. Always my favourite clipper, guys. I can remember when it was launched. Uh, very instrumental in fetching it over because we always saw barbers using the corded senior. And um, when we got the opportunity to take the cord, we were the first country globally to launch it. And I re always remember this story back in 2016 or 2017 when the shutters doors opened at Salon. There were people running to, to, to get the cordless senior. And we always knew how big it were and how, how, how popular it were going to be, but it's still my go to clipper. You know, out of everything, it's always my favourite clipper. Well, I've still, I've still got mine, but you tried to put something terrible on it. Um, it was... Uh, you, it ended up being the king, but you, you had, because you, you, you had a, a guy there actually inscribing him, didn't you? Actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Emmy. We got him yeah. from Celtics. Uh, yeah. we, we learned after he did it by hand that he could only do 30 a day. He didn't realise how busy it'd be. I mean, there were, there were so hundreds that were let down. Now we have a guy that comes with a machine and, and does it, and it's a little bit you can get them done in like about a minute. But people come to him and asking for like different messages on the seniors at that time. And your, you know, your, your PA at the time, I can't, what was oh, she, she goes, uh, you go, right, I want that. You went up to Emmy and said, right, I want this putting on Gary's clipper. And she goes, if you put that on his clipper, he's not having it because it was something absolutely outrageous. And in the end, he ended up putting the king. <laughs> I've still got it. Never used it. It's still in the glass case, I tell you. you can't you've got to... remember. can't remember what I wanted to put on it. What is something rude? Yeah, very. What? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, just quickly before we have our next guest on, uh, the BBA Reader's Digest is out next week, and we've got a fantastic little piece in there about barbering jobs. Uh, we've got a fantastic creative director available in Dubai only. You'll be uh, you'll be tax free for starters. I can't say the actual company. If anybody's interested, obviously read the digest first. But if you need any information, go to admin at britishbarbers.com, and you can download and get to speak to somebody about that job but there's i think we've got about i think there's about 10 jobs in there to, at this time really really this one's top class you you've been to dubai you know what it's like anybody wants a new start or creative director you, you know it's going to mainly be education i think but what a, what a situation to be in anybody who's out there who who fancies a change or wants to change the the direction they're going into what an opportunity. So please, please have a look at it. Have a look at the Reader's Digest. If you want any information, direct message me or, or uh, Trevor Stud, and you can have a look and see what's available. I, he spoke to me the other morning about it, and I'm like, oh, how much is it? I know. I, well, flights be back every weekend to watch football. Didn't think that they would be involved in it. So, um, yeah, might have been a bit harder. Um, so yeah, great opportunity. In fact, I, I got another, um, I'm not going to mention it tonight, but I will mention it on, on the next show. Um, but another company that's opening up a big salon in London, a big spa, and they're opening up a barber area as well. And they're after a head barber to go and head up that team. So there's, there's opportunities out there, you know? Mm -hmm. But I think this industry now, you know, 10 years ago or, or eight years ago, somebody would have said that, you, you could have said, oh, there's so many people. I think barbering, the people earn so much good money that you have to have a high level now to, to you know, the, the, the opening part has to be a big gambit to, to, to turn people's heads. 
because they're all earning good money. So that's it just shows you where this men's and barbering's has gone to. You know, it's uh, it's really, yeah. really good. I think I think as well, it's something different. If somebody wants to get from behind the chair, you know, as well, it's going to be education and taking the brand forward as well. So you know, it could, it's not everybody's back, but it could be something that you're interested. So the BBA readers. Uh, the Barber's Digest, that's what I should have said. Uh, can I just give a quick, before, I know Lauren's in the car park, give a quick shout out to everybody who's joined us already tonight. So Mark Walters, as usual, Serial, uh, Nick Flo, Colleen Danks, who was on with us the last show, Jared Walsh, Jake, there's all those people who, all the usual faces, thank you very much for bothering to tune in. It's great to see you. Anybody want any questions, just direct messages on the feed and we'll try and answer it as we're doing the interviews just before we jump over to lauren don't forget to follow us on our instagram account sammy shaw walt as it's the british barber and barbers underscore arms and our instagram accounts the website for all previous episodes and our podcast that is the barbersarms.co.uk and if you want to email it is barbers british barber.com them's our socials here we go friday the second don't forget, we'll announce it tonight, but on the 16th of September, we've got the British Fellowship, Fellowship for British Hairdressing, who's doing a takeover of Barber's Arms. Ken Picton, past president, and Ken's an amazing hairdresser. He's got the fantastic Ken Picton down in Cardiff. And Carolina Saunders um, from Swindon, uh, she is the chancellor of the fellowship, an amazing presenter and a big name in the industry. Ken and Carolina will be taking over the Barber's Arms for one evening only. And it's going to be a fellowship takeover. That's going to be on the 16th of September. We'll fill you in a little bit later if you're watching. Whenever you're watching this tonight, I know people don't watch it live sometimes, but tomorrow morning or Sunday afternoon, whenever your time is, welcome and uh, uh, enjoy episode 91 here on Friday the 2nd of September. Here we go then. We're going to go over to Texas in America. and um, We're going to interview a very interesting lady, a first time here on Bowers Arms. Um, and she's the owner of the gents place and we're going to find out a little bit more about what she's got in place ask some questions about her career and some other questions as well so without further ado please welcome lauren davis hi thanks for having me How are you? oh doing good doing good here in our gents place in frisco texas location now, Lauren, I know uh, we haven't met before, I don't think. I know I've met Ben. Um, great to have you on the show. It's fantastic for you giving us your time. What time is it over there at the moment? Is it about lunchtime, something like that? A little past lunch, around 2.15 in the afternoon. All right, so 2.15 in the afternoon. Are you, are you joining us in a drink today? I know you, you serve alcoholic beverages and uh, soft drinks and coffee and everything in, in your establishment. So have you got a drink on the go? That you've, you at the moment or not? <laughs> I don't at the moment because I have to drive thirty minutes home. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm being a responsible business owner. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we we like to hear that as well because there are <laughs> interesting things that we're going to ask you tonight, and uh, we've got to, got a few things on the agenda for you. But first and foremost, can you give us a, a little roundup of who you are, what you are, and where you are really within the business. Yeah, so uh, my husband and I started our first barber shop, The Gents Place, when we were 25 years old. So that's 14 years ago. We just saw, you know, an opening in the men's grooming market and just thought, wow, we love service, we love people, and we want to make a difference in an in, in industry. And this one just really, we felt called to it. So the barbering beauty industry. And so we opened our very first location in Frisco, Texas um, back in 2008. So we launched our entrepreneurial career when here uh, Lehman Brothers had just uh, collapsed. The economy was tanking, it's a great recession. And our banker called us and said, if you don't spend on your, um, on your loan, we're gonna take it back. <laughs> so we said, okay, we're charging forward. And so we just went on and I do all the design and construction for our locations. And um, we've built a beautiful culture here to just inspire and inspire all of the, the you know, 
cosmetologists and barbers coming to us to be true professionals. Cause a lot of times I feel like in our industry, it's not regarded as a true profession. And so we have done everything we can to, to build that up and scale it across the United States. I mean, Laura, you talk there and obviously I work for an American company in Wall. So uh, welcome to Barbers mm -hmm. Army as well. Can yeah, you thank you. Um, one of the things that, that always stood out as a, as a young presenter going out there when I worked in salons is, is I was amazed by the service levels that if people in America did it right, it was such a difference to what things happened here in the UK. I think the UK has got it right now. I'm just saying at the top of the show there, I've just come back from Sicily. The Italians are lacking a little bit when it comes to <laughs> service and a smile when they're fetching your, uh, your meal. You know, they fetch your bread and water before the meal starts and then charge you for it, end of it, but don't even smile. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm a big, big admirer of the service in America. And uh, I think if you guys have got that spot on as well, it just makes a massive difference, doesn't it? Um, it, you know what it does, and it really comes from, you know, training our team members to be the best version of themselves and having a vision kind of greater than the individual haircut. And I feel like that's what we've mastered at the Jen's place and been able to scale is that we truly believe here that we are making men look and feel their most confident best. Because we know when you feel your best, you do your best. And we believe in when someone comes into our locations whether they be the client or the team member that they, we send them back out in their best possible emotional state. And that's done in a very specific way. We, we are very few people in, in our clients' lives that have access to um, uninterrupted for 30 minutes, sometimes upwards of an hour, depending on what service they're getting. And we're, we're, adjusting their physiology, right? We're touching them. There's not a lot of other people in your life that have access to rubbing your shoulders and touching your hair um, while talking to you. And so we take that very seriously and feel a sincere obligation to, um, to do right by our clients and, and have positive, empowering conversations. Just, just talking about, I mean, I've been to a few of your locations. We've been over to you already. We have an association with you. Uh, Lauren, uh, and we're coming over to you in late October, I believe, as well. We're doing some training with you as well in, in the Frisco shop. Um, I th am I right in saying you've got 11 locations now? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. we have 11 locations open across the country. Chicago, Bentonville, Arkansas, Las Vegas, San Antonio, Austin, Houston, all over Texas. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's obviously, um, this is a pun, it's not your first rodeo. You've, you've, you've got it down to a T, what, what you want to do, where you want to go with this. Mm -hmm. And the brand is absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to, bumped into this brand on your travel, Simon, but it's almost like a gentleman's club. There's a bar, I, shoe shine. I, love, there's, it, it, I, there's, I, I made a few notes, Gary, as Laura was speaking, but I love the strap of like, look better, feel better. Yeah. You look better. But emotionally, we're going to make you feel better, mm -hmm. which I think indirectly when people go into a barber shop, you know, the old fact, you feel better when you've had an haircut, but it's not been took. But if we can then do this, the whole psyche of it as well, I just think it's a massive, you don't realise the power that you have by making you feel, bit, you know, a great haircut, but a great service mm -hmm. without being cheesy or corny. People walk mm -hmm. out feeling like they can tackle anything. They, they might feel yeah. a little bit out, just that one haircut and that how you've made them feel. And like you said, you know, Gary, we've done stuff when we've done service people in, you know, in charity things and, you know, to touch them on the shoulders and stuff. Nobody else does that, barring the barber or their partner. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think we've all, we're, well, yeah, we're fantastic at service and we've done this, we've got, we've got bars and everything. Let's just really get back down to staff training and, this is a good air cuts, but you make your clients feel really special. Have a big personality. Listen and do what you're going to do. And, uh, you know, I take my hat off to you guys. Really good. Yes, it's being really intentional, um, you know, and not leaving it to chance. And also, you know, just think about about the ripple effect of when you are, are empowering someone human to human. Because that's what we're doing. We're empowering them to be the best version of themselves. And um, through haircutting, right, and good conversation, 
Um, but just imagine like a dad who comes in and maybe he's had a rough time with his kids or his family's not going the way he wants it to. And you have a traditional, you know, non-intentional service experience and you get him complaining about his kids for 30 minutes while also accessing his physiology. So it's programming in him or you can take control and steer the conversation to help him remember the best parts of his family and when his kids were functioning because, you know, life is real and things happen. And then he walks out feeling empowered and he goes home a different father, a different husband and a different man in the best way possible. And so we just take that extremely seriously here. You, you need to open a shop in Barnsley. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, we're coming. Yeah, nationwide and, you know, across the world. I love it. The, the, th the thing is, Simon, you ought to see the scale of these places as well. They're huge. You know, I know I know. whenever you go to America or North America, you see the space available. But the, the barbershops that, that we're talking about, the, the men's club, should I say, are just absolutely fantastic. The, the, the space available and how the private meeting rooms, they can run, you know, have a work from 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 the actual barbershop as well after it's a meeting place i think it's this actual style of it is fantastic just getting away from i know i know they're actually beautiful and the service is great and we we've been there and have a look at it what about um the dallas cowboys you know when we were over there last time i know you i don't know if you're still involved but there was you had some I, i'm not sure if it was uh somebody who actually bought into the company or financed the company or invested to do with the Dallas Cowboys. Is he still with you? Yes. Yes. And in our new location or a rebuild of our very first location, our flagship is where I'm at right now in Frisco and we're at the star and that's the Cowboys headquarters. And it's just a beautiful development, just highlighting all the exceptionalness of, um, of the Dallas Cowboys franchise. And um, so that's where this current location's in. I'm in our members lounge right now. Um, and that's custom artwork behind me also, I must say, is a good friend of mine. I played softball with her in high school and she's turned out to be an amazing artist. Her name's Casey Warnke. And she did custom artwork for me for all of our locations um, across the country. So you can't, so you can buy the artwork off the off the wall as well. And we've got some cool Dallas Cowboys pieces in this location if I get a chance to walk you guys around. But yes, uh, yeah, we'll the, we'll the owner of the Cowboys invested in our franchise um, part of the company. Fantastic. So is your shop open on like match days, on game days? Yes. Yeah, we're open on those days and we'll play it on all the TVs. And um, yeah, and it's just a it's it's a great time. You know, Dallas loves their Dallas Cowboys no matter what. Yeah, lots of history as well around that area as well, especially the JFK thing. Um, yeah. Laura, I don't know if you've watched um, uh, any Barber's Arms, but we're going to ask you some questions about careers and stuff. And then we're going to find out a little bit personally about you as well for all our viewers globally. And um, this is... It. Episode 91 of Barber's Arms, over 10 million views since we started in April 2020. Wow, what a journey it's wow, been. Congratulations. Um, uh, Lauren, my first question to you is, if you had a million pounds tomorrow, somebody give you a million pounds, you'd not had to earn it, but they give you a million pound drop, what would you invest it in? Oh, my gosh. You know, I, I have come to love and be so fond of this industry um, you know, I would, my husband and I have both been very passionate about um, taking care of future entrepreneurs. So I'd love to take that, I would take that money and in, invest in the people within this industry to, to start their own businesses, start their own barber shops and barber schools. We've turned out um, entrepreneurs, when you, when you invest in people, it just pays dividends for not only your business, but society. So I'd take that money and just invest it right in the people. Fantastic. Um, am I right? You do your own education as well. You've, you've got your education arm of the company as well. I know we you you we partnered with the BBA. We're coming over in October. I think I think it's the last week. In fact, I think it's the, that location you're in at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I would think so. It's it's definitely one of our biggest ones. So I'd imagine so. And I'll make sure I'm here so I can meet you guys in person. Perfect. Um, from an education point of view and from uh, what you're involved with within the business, and uh, you know, I'm not quite sure you, you said about construction. 
But um, I need to bring up as well, you've got Barberfest coming up in, on the 18th, yeah. on the 18th of September. Now, you're heavily involved in that, you, yourself and Ben. Um, that's, in, that's in Dallas as well. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? What, what's the involvement there with the, the gents place? Yeah, so Barber Fest, we are doing, it's kind of a, it's a combined thing. So I, you know, didn't really like being shut down <laughs> during COVID and having our industry sent underground. So I'm stepping out to run for a public office here in, um, in our Dallas County. So that's our Dallas region encompass 31 cities. So it's a very large position. And so part of, part of that inspired outreach and celebration of the barbering and beauty industry. So Barber Fest is two parts. It's a competition for the best of Dallas County um, in a couple of different categories like best fade, best design, uh, decade style for the women, um, cosmetologists and transformation, best beard um, competition, but then also celebration of everything barber and beauty. Um, we've got a really cool DJ that's going to come. It's all full on entertainment. We're going to see people cutting hair on stage. Um, we've got a, a DJ named DJ Bourne. He's on tour right now with some old school um, hip hop artists, Naughty by Nature and Salt and Peppa. He's coming in town. We have a, a barber who's deemed one of the best barbers in Dallas by D Magazine, Coco Thompson or Corey Thompson. He's also a dancer for Vanilla Ice. Um, the 90s rapper and been on his reality show and he's going to MC the event and we've got celebrity judges local and from afar coming in so it's just one big huge celebration of of everything barber and beauty excellent wow. sounds, sounds amazing um, yeah if you obviously you've done really well 11 locations you and your partner and you know, you're branching out and just things like being involved with the Dallas Cowboys it's just like it's high level um, and we can mm -hmm. see that. But if you had to describe yourself as a superhero, who would it be? Mm. Gosh, I'd, I'd probably say, you know, you know, Mother Teresa, you know, <laughs> like I, I just, I work. <laughs> so superhero. I, I, you know, I prefer and have spent most of my life working behind the scenes and just loving on our team members and just trying to enrich their lives. Because when you come from that core, foundation of making other people's lives um better i mean there's just no greater gift than to see people grow and experience the fullness of life like that, that is my most favorite thing ever is just serving people and seeing them live their dream and their passion and so we say you know we don't know how long you'll be with us at the gents place but as long as you come and then you leave better than when you came we are so happy and we've had people that have been with us for years and then going to start their own barber academy. There's this really cool um, gal, Lily Benitez, who started Blakecraft Barber Academy. And she was one of our original barbers. Like I love nothing more to then see people grow and, and experience life on, on their terms. So, and we also volunteer a lot with the homeless. Um, we do a pop-up barber shop at one of our big shelters here and I get no greater joy than, than you know, restoring their dignity. Um, and facilitating that. Fantastic. They, you know, we were talking about, um, I think we met that, that young lady who's, who's starting the academy. That, that's not far yeah. from, one of, your, um, from a, your, one of your locations as well. So, I mean, great success story. You look after your staff. What's on, yeah. what's on the horizon for the gents place then? What, what's next? Do you, I, know you want, I, know, I know you and Ben want to take over the the world you want to take over the whole of north america but what's the, what's the next step for you guys yeah you know we really just want to grow and expand what we've done here because we're adding value in people's lives and the world needs it more now than ever in my opinion people need to be empowered they need to feel good they need to do good in the world and we feel like we are a catalyst for that um we connect people we grow our staff. So we just want to grow our business so we can grow our mission of making men look and feel their most confident best. Um, and then we've got our, you know, product line and different, different things we're doing here. So we're just trying to grow the, the whole concept um, and, uh, you know, just make a difference. And it's also provides jobs. Small businesses are the engines of all of our economies. And um, we, we just love to provide this um, great place to come and work, be their best self, earn a great living people that work for us 
get paid extraordinarily well because they provide an extraordinary value in other people's lives. So the more we can grow that would be a, would be a blessing. Have you, ever, have you ever read a book called Relentless? Michael Grove. Ooh, that sounds like it's probably in my audible. <laughs> I think so. It's, it's uh, just stuff that you're saying there. Um, if you read Michael Grosvenor's Relentless, this is a guy who was the psychological coach for, uh, coach for a lot of sports stars, Michael Jordan, and you know keeping him at the top of the game all the time. But that book, he, he, Gary, you need to get it as well because it, it's. I mean, you know, it's just it, the title it's itself. It's just relentless. You never stop your standards. You never stop mm -mm. moving forward. Um, the book itself is is, is unbelievable. Uh, I'm going to ask you a little bit of a left field. I think all my questions tonight are left field. Actually, I don't know where I'm going <laughs> from. Um, you know, somebody's successful like yourself and, you know, you move forward. Sometimes people look and think, is there any flaws there? Is there any little, like, chinks in the armour where, you know, there's a downside? So my, my easiest question to ask you without going too deep would be, do you have any bad habits that you can't, like, stop? You know, some people say, yeah, I'm always on my phone. I, I'm in so many WhatsApp groups. I've had to turn off notification. I've now took my emails off my phone. I just have them on my iPad. Uh, I can't, you know, when I get stressed, I have a cigarette. Is there any bad habits that you have, Lauren, that you oh, can't gosh. Grow? Yes, I would say my soda consumption. I'm a sucker for a Dr. Pepper or Diet Coke. I quit it so many times, it makes me an official addict. I can't, can't help myself. So I love my candy and my sweets and my sodas. You look all right, no? <laughs> yeah yeah well you know i'm it's all about 80 20 and we try to do balance so i've been known to drink like a green juice and have a bag of reese's peanut butter cups at the same time so <laughs> we just but try to keep it balanced it is it is a little bit when um i was out there in january in chicago and i always finish off my last two days drinking a lot of pepsi or bismol you know the pink indigestion drink <laughs> yeah. there's just so much rich stuff out there and sweets and like you said, Gary likes the Dr. Peppers, but not in your way that you have it. He has it with Disarano and Coke. And then no, he no. <laughs> so when no, you drink I... soda, he drinks it the same, but it's alcoholic. No. <laughs> I, I, I like it neat. I, I'm not into soda, really. But, you, but you, the thing is, you see, with Laura, Lauren is, she, she, she gave it away straight away. She's Diet Coke or she's... Dr. Pepper light. She's not a full fat girl, is she? She's not a girl who drinks who drinks full fat coke or anything, is she? You know what I mean? You can tell <laughs> straight away. Well, if that's your only vice in life, that's your only bad habit. It's not not too bad, is it? No, I'm a good. I'm a pretty good uh, shopper too. I've got packages that roll up to the door pretty frequently. I can't help me. I love fashion. When I originally, it's my design background. When I originally went to college, I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology. Um, in Manhattan, FIT and, you know, wanted to take over the fashion world and instead we took over the, the barber world with our design concept. Nice. Um, can we have a quick look round before we finish up with some quick fire questions? Is there any chance we can have okay. a quick walk round? Yeah, let me see if I can do this. So this is our members lounge. And so we have lockers here. So you can, these, it's all custom um, mill work. And if you can see, you remember, you can get your name on there. See that? So people put their high-end liquor. Um, then you've got really nice furniture in here. And this is a bar pass-through. Let's see if I can do this. So right here is the bar. Oh, wow. That goes into the main location. Hi. Can you see that? That's the bar. Yeah. So that's a so, pastor in the members lounge. And then I'll come show you the, the main area. I'm walking out. So, um. so I, I was I was I was over there in how long have you had this location, uh, Lauren? Um we rebuilt this one. Hi, those are some of our great clients. You're live in the UK. <laughs> hey um, Mr. Pokemon, we've had this for probably about a year, I think. And our yeah. ceilings are beautiful. Let's see if you can see the ceilings. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. And this, our product shelves are like... Um, there you go. There's, there's, there's the dollar There's shelves. our BBA. Woo. There we go. 
representing. And then here you've got the hallway. These are some of our custom art pieces with the Dallas Cowboy, Troy Aikman, Dallas Cowboy, really sweet dog in a top hat. <laughs> <laughs> cool guy. And then this is the main barber floor. Can you see, I mean, you could literally, if you closed, if you closed your eyes, as you, as you drove up to these, these locations, Simon, you'd think you were in the same place wherever you go. They are absolutely enormous, but they're yeah. so lovely. But all the front, all the members lounge, all the front of house is the same in every location. It's absolutely beautiful. And that's Not the bar, the liquor display. Got some football on the TV. Cowboys there for now. And there's hey. our shoe shine. Is the bar is the bar open if people just want to call in and just have a beer in the, that environment, or do you have to have a, an appointment for an haircut? Nope, you can just stop in, and then you can reserve the members lounge if you need to, or want to have an event, or like a you know, bachelor party or just a business meeting. You want to meet some guys up here, all of it. Yeah, you'll be right home there. You can guess. You've got your ready-made bar within the seminar room. Wow. <laughs> we're, 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 there, we're there at the last week in October, I think. We're there doing doing some education. We've, we've been to quite a few of their locations already. So I'm lo looking forward to coming over to you, Lauren. I'm, I'm sure it'll be a great success as usual. It's been a long time, oh. I think. 2019 since we've been over to North America. I don't know. I think we were in early 2020, but I know it, it seems like a long time anyway. So mm -hmm. nice. Well, you will love this location. It's brand new and beautiful and our full and expanded concept. So I'm really proud of it, all the design elements. So I'd love your love your feedback. This is my baby here. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna finish off some quick fire questions, uh, Lauren. So our viewers okay. across the world, in particular in the UK, get a little bit of idea about you. So here we go. Uh, cats or dogs? Say a oh, cat or dog. Oh, I'm an animal hoarder. I have both. I have three cats and a two dogs. I love animals. Maybe that's another thing I can't control. I can't pass up a kitten. Okay, so we'll say both. Uh, tea or coffee? <laughs> oh, coffee. Love black strong coffee uh, are you a night or day per oh no sorry night in or night out um i'm a night out beautiful uh, beer or wine wine beer is disgusting to me sorry <laughs> <laughs> are you are you a morning person or an evening person Ooh, an evening i've been known to pick up a vacuum at midnight and clean the house <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Uh, do you like winter or summer? Say that again. Winter or summer? Ooh, summer. I love the sun, but I love the Caribbean too. Oh, expensive taste. Uh, Lauren, it's been yeah. on Barbara's arms. Your shop looks amazing. Um, I've heard great stuff. Just taking us around there, just sees the scale of the business and uh, both you and your partner, Ben, you've done an amazing job. Um, what an amazing thing to have like a shop in the Dallas Cowboys, it's uh, it's fantastic. So congratulations, well done. Keep up your relentless um, pursuit in making people's lives better by your employees, but also making your clients feel really special as well and making them look good. So well done. And uh, thank you for joining us tonight on Barber's Arms. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And um, thank you very much, Lauren. And good, good luck in uh, being a candidate for county court judge as well it hopefully it goes very well for you and we'll see you very very soon the, i think it's the 23rd 24th 25th we're with you in october so we'll see you in frisco oh, in october can't wait i'll serve you up a good drink see you later bye bye, bye. thank you bye bye wow well, what a place guys oh honestly i can't i can't over overestimate how the locations are you saw how big they are. They're absolutely, I mean, their their meeting place is as big as some barber shops. And that's, you know, then they've got a bar, then they've got the shoe shine, they've got the retail area, and then the shop floor as well. I mean, averaging between 12, 15 barbers on the shop floor as well. So it's just 
the, and it's beautiful play, but you can literally close your eyes. If they put, put you in, in front of any shop, you'd think you're in the same place. They're all exactly the same. But there, there's a lot of members as well. You know, where I don't know if you've ever tried it over here or a lot of companies have. You know, when you have a subscription, so you're a member of that barbershop and you have 10 or 12 services a, a year and you pay up front and you, you literally use it as a private members club. It's, it's just beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Great concept as well. It'd be good there. So as soon as you finish your seminar and she says, do you want a beer? Um, you'd be perfect. She'd just be able to sit there and get absolutely obliterated when you've done your seminar. No. I have one to be to be polite. And then they, they want to take me out anyway. So then I go home and get changed and well, back, back to the hotel. And then we go out. Oh, they don't know what they're letting themselves in for. <laughs> it's nice being looked after though isn't it you know when you go to these places it's it's not a tourist place but i mean i've worked all over dallas anyway all over uh, texas anyway i mean what you've got to remember is it's as big as france it's huge man absolutely <laughs> huge and you you want you, you're flying around the around the the county of the the state and it's just they're just lovely people and the, Dallas people or Texas people, they are full on. Uh, uh, they, I think they, they, they think they're the biggest, the best, and rightly so, because they probably, that their economy and, uh, you know, and the, the, um, the state itself, I think they are a lone star state, obviously. I think there's, I think there's Texas and uh, California. They're on the verge. Of, they could they could break away from the union on their own. They that yeah they're that, they're that big, but lovely people as well. Lovely that people looked amazing. It's one of them places where you want to work, but also where you want to have a chill out and have a haircut or a shave or whatever as well. Um, they look good, really good. Okay, um, I wanted to speak to you about before we get the next guest on. I met this young man. I keep saying young man. I met this guy over there. Um, you know, when you're abroad sometimes and people who travel abroad, um, there's no nerves anymore. Um, I think sometimes you need a bit of a pick me up. Um, I, if anybody reads my latest column in Barber Evo, I don't know if you've seen it yet, Gaz. Um, it's in yellow and green. So it's the latest copy. The color scheme's really good. And I've spoke about my trip just coming up to Australia. And a little pep talk that my daughter gave me. Because I felt a little bit just before I went, can we do this anymore? How much more do you need of that traveling? Blah, blah, blah. And I've, I've, I've published it in the uh, magazine. But whilst we were there, you get into the room and you get set. And now you have this English brummy accent that's there, thinking that they're all Australians. And this guy's there. And uh, we hit it off straight away. And it was nice to have somebody there. Who's ne he's not lost his accent. You know, and he's um, he's been out there. I think I think he'll tell us in a minute, but maybe 15, 16 years he's been out there. Um, so it's a big, big stint, and he, he's made a great life out there. I think there's lots of people always wondered about moving out to Australia as a barber, as an hairdresser, and what could be in store. So this next 20-minute interview for all you guys tonight, tomorrow, whatever country you're in, if you're thinking about moving out to Australia to have a new life and a new career, you're going to find out exactly by first hand of what this man did uh, all those years ago, a decade and a half ago, how he went to Australia, set up a business and set up a fantastic lifestyle for himself. That's all coming up uh, very shortly. Um, just a little plug, wall.co.uk. It's your time now to change your careers, uh, to enter the Wall British Barber of the Year and Barbershop of the Year. The current winners, Reese Whitehouse and Palos Barbers, uh, respectively of their awards um, it's now time that this year's finalists um, will be announced in the next four weeks um, with the, the entries guys already you know I think they're, they're already steaming in and uh, you know it's going to be a really good big competition this year I'm really excited um, to to see the entries and and then to get them I know you're judging the the final actually in London um, but you know 
the real hard work has to come before that because when you get over 100 and 200 entries on all of them, you've got to sieve them through and, and get that down to, you know, 12. And it takes me and Joff, Joff Davis from Savills. It takes us a couple of days to get through it all um, to get the right candidates. And, you know, we, he'll, we'll, we'll have a day together and then that night we'll go back and th those little final 10, they'll change names maybe 15 times. And there's arguments on both sides, why they should be in, why they shouldn't be in. Then you have to get down to the final six. Um, it's an hard task, that. But, guys, don't forget, if you're watching this, the lines are open, the entries are open. You can enter now for the World British Barber of the Year and World Barbershop of the Year um, there already. And uh, the winners will be announced on the uh, 9th of October at Sol International on the Sunday. And Mr Mention will be there. I hope you get a new suit fitted. Of course, I always have a new suit for every season. Good, I've been looking forward to see that. Is it three-piece? Oh, always, always, mate. You know me. Is it three-seater? Hey, I, I, you'll be surprised when you see me this next weekend. You'll be, you'll be all right, it's only worry. Good. We, are, we, are we wearing dinner suits on, uh, on next Saturday? No, next oh, full, full regalia, yeah, you need to wear your full. Well, I was thinking... I'm comparing it, so I've got to move about a little bit different. But you, would you fancy wearing a kilt? Uh, I've, I've actually, um, I've got a sporran, I've got a kilt, and Mr. Ross sorted me out. I'm not, I'm doing, I don't know about it. You see, if you get, if you wear a kilt, you've got to go, you've got to go, uh, got to go commando, haven't you? And I don't know if I'm up for that over there. So it's, you've got to have a sporran. I've got, I've got a nice sporran off Ross. Kids see of Ross, Ross Mill. I mean, yeah, there's a there's story behind that as well. And I've got my shirt, but I've got a family, I've, I've got a family tart now. I have. So I went for the black and black and blue I did. So, or black is the right it, time. It's just not a pretty thought that's running through me. I need to check the cobbles and we need to get over to Australia and fetch. I don't know what time it is in Australia, actually. It's probably about 6.30, 7 o'clock uh, a.m. When we started, it was four, so it's nearly. It's just coming up to five o'clock, and wow. he's got a he's got a really terrible picture of me that I sent when I was in drunk one night in my kitchen with just the sparring and nothing else. So um, six a.m. for Mark out in Australia, so we're going to have to find out exactly what he's drinking because when I did the show from Australia, it was in the afternoon and it was early morning for you and Dean Gleeson, but you did have a alcoholic smoothie, didn't you? You did, you did show that, you did pave the way for people. You know me, I, I don't disappoint you. I, there's, a, there's a drink for every moment of the day, isn't there? Well, there you go. Guys, coming up on the 16th of September, we've got a fellowship takeover. Ken Pinkton and Carolina Saunders will be in the Barber's Arms uh, on a fellowship wrap. Uh, that night we've got some amazing guests coming and not to be missed on the 16th of September that's the next Barber's Arms episode 92 will be a fellowship takeover and then hopefully leading us up to our 100 year, 100, uh, 100 years 100th show yeah. which we should get done in 2022 um, obviously we've got lots of trips coming up we're going to try and interview some of the people I'm going to be working with over in Thailand and Dubai and also as well uh, here in the UK coming up to the awards season. Let's try and get some interviews with some of the big names that's up for session stylists of the year, British hairdresser of the year, you know, the barbers of the year as well. Um, and maybe interviewing some of the Shabba winners next week at the Scottish Air Awards. Let's get some of them on as well. So that's all coming up in the next episodes of Barber's Arms. Uh, just, Gary, just, just before we have, um, you know, Mark on, can I just say... Just give them a shout out to people who are watching. Ian Harold, uh, American Crew, Matthew Dunkety, in got up and actually watching us. Great to see you, mate. Hopefully, we'll get over there and try and see you very soon. Uh, Julie Prescott, Mr. Brian Guam, who's just reminded me last time I was working in Dallas, we were, we were in a hotel, we were ready to go to bed, and we met a bunch of guys. Who said, do you fancy going into, into Dallas? You know, you, you stayed in Dallas. We were not far from the airport. And he said, do you fancy going into Dallas? And he looked at me and I goes, yeah, let's go. We're only here once. Took us an hour and a half to drive into Dallas. Then we went out. Then we were driving an hour and a half back. But who got left behind? Moi. You. 
Who didn't know which hotel we were in? Well, that happened in Telford and we're only 200 yards from hotel, but you still got lost. Anyway, that's part and parcel of sharing an evening with Gary. It sometimes can get very dark, maybe as dark as the road. Who knows? Anyway, how <laughs> with tonight's show, here we go. It's Friday, this Friday, 2nd of September. We're getting so close to the uh, big ones. It's, it's dark outside already. Uh, we've had a great summer in the UK and, um, you know, one of my... Uh, parts of my summer has been travelling quite a lot. I had the privilege of going out to Australia and uh, spending three or four days with 12 of the most amazing uh, presenters and new people that um, I could have wished to work for. Maybe so welcome. But when you're out there and you hear a familiar accent that is English, it's a brummy accent, and I hit it off with this guy straight away. So without further ado, welcome him from Brisbane. Um, he's the owner of Esquire Men's uh, Grooming, Male Grooming, and he's one of the wall artistic team presenters from Birmingham, residing in Brisbane, Mr. Mark Rabone. Hi, fellas. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hi, Gary. How are you, mate? <laughs> Good, thanks, mate. Fun. Hi, Sai. Hey, brother. How are you doing, man? Good, mate. Good, good. I've got the year you were born on my shirt. 82, is it? I can't see it. Uh, 17, no, 1977. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Close I, I, enough. Mark, I know it definitely isn't the year he was born anyway. You need to know. <laughs> okay, not far off. Get off with you. Mm. Take, take 10 off that. Hey, Gaz, before okay, you start your questions, Gaz, Mark. I want to ask you one question. Have you missed me? Oh, mate, you know, I've been listening to the podcast. At home. I'm a drive down to work every day, listening to the pair of you crack on. Uh, you know, I've missed the, the few uh, Shaman motherfuckers and stuff like that, you know? So, um, yeah, I have, mate. I have. I've been following your holiday. You're always on holiday. Easy. <laughs> hey, he's not, not wrong, though, is he? You're always away. You're always about. <laughs> anyway, Mark... You, you know he only he, you know he only gives that Shimon I won't say it because it's it's gross as well because he only, he only gives that little shout out when he gets rather excited you know <laughs> yeah I did notice that there was a collaboration <laughs> so, so you got you got you got him over excited when you were over there so <laughs> uh, did you did you get did you take him out the last night and get him ruined after I spoke to you or not. Um, well, actually, yeah, it was it was more Heath's idea, you know, he had this prohibition bar, so we did get in there, but um, I don't think we got as wasted as as, uh, as we could have done, because we would have had a big day the next day, so uh, we, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what uh, Si and Trevor ended up to, like, you know, we've never asked, but uh, and I'm sure we'll never know, but um, yeah, not, right. not as wasted as, as we could have done, but I think it was more self-preservation than anything. Hey, listen... Um, it was dis disappointing because Trevor was disappointed, not me. His first time over in Australia, he should have took the lead and took me out there. But you know what Trevor's like? He's a bit of a fanny, so he couldn't make it. We ended up having that last drink in that uh, mysterious bar that we were in and <laughs> ended up going back to the hotel. We did eventually, though, go to the Brecky Club. And the Brecky Creek. Brecky we went Creek to the Brecky Hotel. Creek. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we had to break it clean the day after. Uh, I've got to say, I will talk about it a bit, but it was big build up and it weren't, I didn't find it that, I don't know, it weren't that inspiring. Uh, I enjoyed most of my time with you guys down in that, what was that big bar that we went to? We met every night in that big bar just down the street from the hotel. Oh, the uh, the pig and whistle, the faux, faux English pub. <laughs> yeah. You come all the way over from England and we take you to an English pub, eh? Oh, that, that, that English. Terrible. Bastards <laughs> had me with snakes and everything. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. Gary, over to you. Anyway, I know that we people out there are regulars who, who watch us around the world. They've actually had a little taste of you guys anyway already because we did uh, a Zoom uh, episode anyway, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And you, yeah. you all introduced yourself on that anyway. But anybody who wasn't there, can you just introduce yourself... Uh, as I introduce you, Mark, um, can you introduce yourself? How you ended up where you were, you where you are, how long you've been there, and what you're doing at the moment, mate? 
Yeah. So, uh, Mark Ravon, um, uh, so um, um, I've been a barber for about 30 years, we'll say. We've been in the industry about 30 years, a couple of, a couple of years as a sabbatical and that. So, um, but uh, I met my my dear wife. I met her over in Australia, um, I beg your pardon, over the Greek islands. I was back there in 94. Uh, and she dragged me over here kicking and screaming, basically. So I've, I've been here for about 27 years now, coming and going. Um, about all up, actually, about 27 years. Um, and I uh, lived in Melbourne for a while, for about four and a half years. Moved back up to Brisbane after we got married. And about two years later, I set up my first shops, uh, Esquire, in, uh, in Milton. And then I opened up a second one. Uh, about eight years ago now in the CBD. So we've got two shops within uh, about a couple of kilometres of each other. Um, I say that will be 18 years in November. Um, so it's been amazing. I, I, you know, I really enjoy it. Uh, I've been working with American Crew for about 12 years and, and now I'm uh, happily with the uh, the, the wall uh, team as well. So, um, yeah, it was, um, as I say, 27, 28 years ago when I had hair and... and uh, I had a tan, my poor wife. She was oh, uh... so that, that 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 makes it that makes it brings it all together now. That's how you know Mr. Ian Harold then from Liverpool. Uh, yeah, the legend Ian, absolutely, yes. He's yeah. watching you tonight, he's watching you tonight. And a great, great presenter and a great Hello, program. mate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we yeah. saw the guys over in Brighton, I think there was him and the guys from Sheffield, the uh, Taylor lads. Um, I, mean, uh, yeah. Ian there. I think I mentioned it to you just for when I came out. Um, I came out to you, so I've seen Ian there. So, evening, Ian. I hope you're watching Mr. Raboni uh, over in Australia. Um, yeah, um, you know Barbara's Arms now. I think you bought into the the when we saw it live in Oz, and then you've listened to podcasts. You know what's going to come up. We're going to ask you some questions about your career, and we're going to ask you some other questions, and we'll finish off some quick fire questions. But this first one, though, uh, from production is is kind of like uh, explain about an English barber going out to Australia and trying to make it work. What's the transition? How did it work? And, you know, I think a lot of people still I want to go to Australia and, and have a new life and a career. Tell us challenges, transitions and what it's like now. Mm. Well, look, I mean, when I come first come over, I mean, I came over on a working holiday, you know, one of the old, you know, they do a year visa and stuff like that. So that first year I came over, I couldn't even get barbering because you only allowed three months at one certain place. So, you know, who wants to employ somebody for three months? Um, but when we came back on, I was on a, a bridging visa by then, as I say, with uh, having met my wife, we, we decided to apply for uh, for residency, uh, being Australian. Um, and yeah, it, I, as I say, moved down to Melbourne, and there's, there, there was there was opportunities there. You know, I think that we, obviously British barbers uh, have a great reputation over here. So, uh, and I was fortunate enough to to find a good shop. Um, as I say, and once I got my residency, it, it was uh, it was a lot easier. But I say back then it was a bit di different landscape in barbering, probably just like it was in the UK, you know, 18, 19 years ago. Um, so now, um, yeah, coming over, if you, were, uh, if you were thinking about coming over, I mean, the visas have changed a little bit post-COVID. I know they're not sort of opening up the floodgates so much now. But look, in, in Australia, there's quite a lot of... Big shopping centres. I don't know if you've got them in the UK so much, but we're talking huge shopping centres. So, you know, there'll be five barbers in in, in one of these centres. Um, and they're very good for recruitment, particularly with, uh, you know, it's, it's more of a walking surface, etc. So uh, they're very good for recruitment for overseas barbers just to get your foot in your door if you are backpacking and stuff like that. Uh, and then there is sponsorship, um, you know, avenues that you can go down. And I tell you what, we're all crying out for barbers here at the moment. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, for me personally, the difficult part, of course, is to see, um, you know, not 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 so much how they perform, but you know, how they get on with everybody, uh, etc. But um, yeah, you know, if you're coming over, you know, reaching out, speaking to people, getting to know people, because I think once that once the doors open again. Um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities, and as I say, you know, it, it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big industry now. It's exploded here, just like everywhere else, and, and um, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities. So, I mean, I, I have sponsored, I've, I've sponsored people from the past, uh, 
uh, an Irish girl was was a sponsor for a while, and they give you you know two, and then you can get another two year visa on top of that. So, and I think after about four years, it's pretty easy to uh, to to apply and and get permanent residency. So, the avenues are there. I think you just got to put now is a great time to be putting the footwork in. Do you, you know what though, uh, Mark? I think you know we we just had uh, Matthew just on as well, and me, me, one of my best mates is over in Australia at the moment. I think if there's a certain skill set needed, it, you know, the sponsorship situation is a lot easier, isn't it? You know, you, you can actually get people over there. I know, you know, you, you did mention about COVID, but I think the opportunities are still there. One thing that a lot of our viewers want to talk about, and we, 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 we posted some jobs today. There's a huge job in, um, in Dubai at the moment. But, you know, when, when you first think of, I know you, you got, taken over there by a woman and you had got waylaid and you were following following something you probably shouldn't have been, but it worked out great. Um, from, a, from a professional point of view, what are the, you know, what are the feelings, what, what, what's, the, what's the attitude of people when you get there and when you're getting over there and you, you, you the, the, from, from a job situation, you're leaving here, you're going over there, give somebody some, some support or give them some idea of, of, of what it's like or how, how they go about it. But, you know, probably just the same in the UK. One thing you will find about Australia and English, you know, we, and the Brits, sorry, we, we, we've got a very similar sense of humour and, um, yeah, you know, it, uh, we, we like to, to have good banter. Uh, and I think, as I say, you know, uh, if you're coming over from Britain, that's, you know, th that's an advantage straight away. Uh, as I say, we have got a great reputation over, over here as well. Um, and, and it's really just a case of getting in there and maybe, you know, for the first couple of months, have a look around, see where you want to be. You know, Melbourne's very similar to, the, to many parts of the UK. Uh, Sydney, obviously, it's a big city, a lot of opportunities there. Brisbane, it's it's not as big a city. There's still one and a half million people here, or something. Uh, but a lot of opportunities up here, and of course, you know, you, you're getting closer to uh, yeah, closer to the equator, which is what we want, right? You know, and, and somewhere like Perth, you know, that's obviously, um, you know, that's almost uh, it's, it's five hour flight away from the east coast. So. I have I have to say, Mark, I'm looking on your Facebook the other day, and I see that you're selling a property. And yes, there's not many barbers that are selling a property. In the UK, <laughs> like you've got, your pool looks stunning. The house looks yeah. stunning. So, if you all want to go across um, and have a look at Mark's uh, salons, and I'm sure we're going to put all his info now on your screens, all the contacts there to get him with Mark. If you do fancy going out to uh, Australia and you fancy a job in barbering, then get in touch with Mark. He's got some beautiful salons. He's a great presenter. He's well connected within that industry, and just have a look at his lifestyle. What he's created in 27 years out there. I don't think if he was living in uh, near Aston Villa that he would have an house <laughs> that big with a swimming pool. And he was upgrading, not downgrading, he's upgrading to a better house. Wow, what, what, what can you want? <laughs> Well, well, you know, as I say, uh, I, I love it out here, but, um, you know, we, we're a democracy in this family and I'm firmly outvoted three to one, so we'll be selling. That's all, that's all I know. I think we're going closer to the beach. Thing, thing, thing is, though, you wouldn't want a pool in uh, near Aston Villa either, though, would you? <laughs> no, no. It'd get filled with shopping trolleys before you know it, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well... But joking apart, it's been very good to you. You've had a great, you know, great life out there. Um, when, when, if you were giving somebody your younger self some, some, um, some advice, what would it be? The one or two nuggets of advice going out. What, what age were you when you went out there? Uh, I was twenty three when I first come out. Um, twenty three, yeah. So. Um, I think, as I say, you know, have a look around, find where you want to be, uh, and and throw yourself in wholeheartedly. It is, it's a, it's a fantastic place to be. You know, um, w you know, the, the world's a small place now. You can always, you know, visit family on on social media or, or, or sort of through messenger and stuff. Um, but I think as well, you know, make sure it, it, one of one things that there is, um, you know, a little bit of a stigma about when travellers is, of course, you know, and it has happened to me, you know because they're traveling, there can be a little bit less loyalty. And, you know, you'll get a phone call on New Year's Day. I'm not coming in tomorrow. In fact, I'm not coming back. I'm going down to Sydney, which obviously, 
you know, there's not much you can do about it, but uh, it, it doesn't sort of bode well, you know, with, um, yeah, someone else that might want to go in there, you know, it's one of those, you know, once bitten, twice shy scenarios. So, yeah, you know, think of it as anybody else, anywhere else, you know, we are employee uh, employers and, um, you know, if you get let down um, with, I mean, it's no issue letting everybody down and, and it's a hard place to fill. So, yeah, you know, finding somewhere good, uh, do your research and that way, you know, you... you well, thing, uh, thing is, though, mate, as an employer, you can have that done wherever you are in the world. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that, right. That happens in Stoke, in Sydney, in Singapore. It happens wherever, doesn't it? So, I it think... It me because they all want to stay with me, but you two have obviously got challenges that are hitting you on a daily basis. Um, oh, Matt, have you heard him? He's, well, he's listen, so listen to me. We've got to get on with these questions. Um, and um, we're going to see how my training, our media training, presenting training, has worked and paid off with uh, Mark. Uh, Mark, first question to you. Uh, what's been the biggest influence on your career? Twofold. Ooh. One on a professional level and then one on a personal level. Who's been the biggest influences on your career? Um, on, on a professional level, um, I would say, you know, certainly you, you, people from the, uh, the oh, first and foremost, a, a guy I used to work for, uh, Paul Botello down in, uh, in Melbourne, he, he was great, you know, he, he had a cool little barber shop uh, and um, I think he's got bespoke barbers now in New Zealand and in, in Auckland, but yeah, he was a great influence on me um, and uh, people from American Crew, um, like Paul Wilson, uh, Felix Thompson, the great Ian and Nick, and uh, um, Al Urbanowski, that they sort of really showed me um, a, a new sort of uh, perspective on barbering. Uh, of course, uh, most recently, you, your good self, you know, um, uh, we, 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 we had some... Whilst it was only four days, it felt like forty. You know that what we got crammed in, and uh, the, the the great sort of uh, I think affirmation as well as you know knowledge uh, that was passed on that we're doing the right thing, and and you know presenting a show is about making it a show, making sure that people enjoy themselves. You know, it's it's a performance, so that's been fantastic uh, on a personal level. You know, probably people like you know my dad's uh, my my lovely wife, and my kids now, crikey. You know, I got a new apprentice the other day and he's younger than my, my son. And that was a, that feels like a milestone. I feel a little bit older now. So, uh, but yeah, you know, just people around me, close people, they're, they're the, uh, they keep me grounded. And, and um, you know, as I say, you know, when you've got kids, when you've got a long family, you know, you, you, you know, failure is not an option. So they're, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they've been all my, my big influences. So. Excellent. Just, just quickly, uh, Mark, as, as an industry in, in Australia at the moment, I'm just asking, do you travel home much? Or when, when I say home, back to the motherland, as in yes. the yeah. UK. Um, what, what's the industry like in Australia now at the moment? And I know it's a huge country and it, you're in, you know, this, I mean, our, our, our followers out there, our, our uh, guests and everybody who we have all over the world, it's just they can only dictate and talk about where they're talking about in their little own kingdom. But, and I know Australia is huge, but what's the industry like there at the moment? Yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's, it's going from strength to strength. There's, uh, you know, I think probably like the UK, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a good family, there's a good connection, even though it is, a, a, you know, a big place, you know, I've got lots of great friends in, in, in Melbourne and Sydney and, and Adelaide. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a real great family vibe. There's some phenomenal barbers coming through. I mean, People like Lee Windsor and and, and Al McCarthy from the Area Academy, uh, uh, Luke Bunn, um, uh, even my my one of my my managers Matt Clark. You know he's he's got a, a second finalist. He's just made that for the you know barber of the year, uh, men's headrest of the year in Australia. So there's so many great young barbers out there. Obviously, you know a lot of the crew family, uh, the the uh, Wall family that have come on. You know James Lunnett, I think he's been doing it three four years. Anthony from Nafatalia, they're absolute weapons. You know. Um, so the industry is going really good. It's really strong. Um, you know, just like there, there's lots of different sort of types, whether they're urban barbers, you know, professionals, walk-ins, uh, traditional. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's really strong and, and, and there's some absolutely amazing barbers coming through and it's, it's great to sort of sit back, and, well, not sit back, but it's great to watch them come through and, and even like, you know, 
someone like myself, you're still learning from him. I, I love watching these young guys coming through. So, well, you watched Gary on Barber's Arms when we were doing it at 5 30, 6 o'clock on an afternoon after a, a busy day. And we were going to go back in with we we Gary. What you didn't know when we did Barber's Arms, we were in very middle of a very emotional part of the presentation skills. So <laughs> the mood might have been a little bit subdued, but we, we the Barber's Arms are a great refreshment to, to break that up. Uh, However, you all commented on Gary doing a uh, alcoholic smoothie because it was first thing in the morning for the UK. What are you drinking this morning? Are you a lightweight or are you going <laughs> hardcore? Mate, I got up at four thirty this morning. Twenty years ago, I might have had a beer with you or something. I'm, oh. I might have stayed up on the night the oh. way through, but I've got coffee. Oh, can, I, can, I pretend it's, can I pretend it's an Irish coffee? Can I pretend to put something in there? <laughs> Hey, listen, oh, you've, you've, ru you've ruined it. You've ruined it. It's an it. Irish coffee then. We, we, <laughs> thought, we thought that you would have done it tonight. You'd have done proper, proper hardcore there. Um, it, I don't think Andy's watching uh, your leader out there, who did a great job, by the way. What a fantastic... Uh, I, I was out there five days, but I know you got, well, guys were out there probably 10 days accumulating with the Legend launch as yeah. well, but... Uh, well done, Mandy Galloway and uh, David Grant, who are our leaders out there in Australia. Amazing, uh, amazing, just amazing people, amazing team. Um, it, 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 hang on, two seconds. Do you know he's lost the bet now and he's got to buy all the week, all the beer the next weekend? Oh, really? No, no change I... there then, Mark. There's no bets. I'll just <laughs> buy it anyway. It's on my table. It's on a free night, an awards dinner. I've got a table of 10. I'm comparing. The drinks will be on. I'll say to a guys, guys, I'm busy tonight. Make sure everybody's got drinks on. And I, I dread. You get up about 6.30 a.m. in the morning, you wake up in hot sweats thinking, my fucking bar bill's going to be horrendous because I put gas <laughs> in the garage. Um, anyway. do, you know, do you know what he'll say? He'll say, who ordered all this? Me. He'll go, right, you're paying then. That's what he'll do. That's what he'll do, I tell you. <laughs> it's the wall way. Um, uh, okay. Mark, uh, as a busy salon owner, for all people who's watching, there's salon owners that watch us, salon owners that are watching us tonight, you know, you, you know people that's watching. And not only a salon owner, but then a presenter. Again, tonight, there'll be salon owners watching us tomorrow, throughout the week, globally, the salon owners and they are presenters. One thing I always ask is, because I struggle with this, is, but what do you do to relax? What switches you off from the salons and the presenting? Because sometimes... As you finish the salon work, you're off travelling, then you need to present. What's the bit that just relaxes you, completely shuts you off from everything? Um, you know, well, I don't know it's relaxing, but I, I like, like you, I like my football. I, I still like playing football. So, uh, you know, I, I like just going out and having a kick about twice a week, you know, down play up in Brisbane and then I play down here at the Gold Coast. Um, you know, I like getting on a, a paintbrush. I, I like doing a little, you know, canvases and stuff like that. That's sort of, I've got my shed down there. So uh, I'll go down at the, the old man shed and uh, potter around the shed is what the kids call it. And I, I'll do a bit of painting like that. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, obviously we're in Australia. I'm not far for the beach. So I do like going for a, a walk along the beach and stuff like that. Sometimes my wife will come with me. Most times not. She don't want to be seeing me now. Um, but yeah, that, <laughs> Just, just the usual stuff these days, you know. Um, just yeah, beach, bit of painting, having a kick around. That that you know, keeps me nice and relaxed. Just, just, just in one word. In one word, what's the best thing about Australia? Oh, sun. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know what though? You forget. I'm addicted to that, and that you know, I just asked the last lady, "Is what's one of your, you know, bad habits?" And mine has to be, you know, when I'm away and I'm going, you know, travel a lot. Whenever I have down, I couldn't with you guys because we're obviously we're in winter, yeah. but where possible, um, you know, I, I'm addicted to sun. To work in a climate like you guys work in, especially where you are as well. I mean, Trevor knows it, guys, you know it as well, but. Even the winter were mild. It was a bit like our summer. Their summers are amazing. You know, to have that kind of like nice weather all the time. You got to feel positive all the time, aren't you? It's, it's just one of those vibes that makes you feel good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, as you say, you you wake up and it's uh, the sun's out. You know, it, it it smells like summer all the time. And and you know, it's like in the UK, right? I know you've had a great summer there. You know, this year, but. Uh, 
yeah, you know, that first day of, of, of great weather, that's the time to go and ask the bank manager for a loan and stuff like that, isn't it? They're all happy. Everyone's happy. So, um, I'm yeah. Up, that. <laughs> hey, hey, do you, know, do you know what, though? Did you notice, I don't know if you noticed or you watched the previous interview with uh, Lauren, but I don't know if you picked up on this, Simon. Did you hear? She, she said, we, had a, we started the business in 2008, which is like the biggest banking crisis in the world. They just taken a huge loan out, and they said, and the bank manager said to him, "If you don't spend it, you're going to lose it." So they carried on their plans through the hard one of the probably hardest points in in, in living history for for bank crisis, and they mm. did they 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 made it a multi million pound business. I mean, Fair play. Unbelievable. Beautiful. unbelievable, unbelievable. Matt, Matt, last serious question to you is. Uh, is what's your biggest ambition that you still not achieved? Something that's burning away at you, that you've had a long career, 30 years in this industry. You come from the UK, you're in Australia, 27 years. You've got a beautiful wife, kids growing up. You've got two salons. You present for a crew, present for a wall. Um, what is the still thing? What's the one burning ambition that's still eating away a little bit there that I need to do that? I've got to do that. I've got to tick that box. Yeah. Look, you know, actually, you know, since I've moved down the Gold Coast, I, I, I've moved a little bit off the floor. So I only do three days a week on the floor now, which I love. Uh, and, and once we get rid of this place, I'm, I'm going to have some extra time on my hands. And um, yeah, so I, I, I'm going to get into a bit of photography. I, I want to sort of do some photography. And, uh, you know, I think I can't fight this uh, this, this social media, you know, uh, anymore. I want to be good at photography. I want, I want to sort of... Uh, Start doing it a little bit more of that, get some content stuff together because I am well behind the ball when it comes to stories and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I want to I start doing some photography stuff and, and um, yeah, you know, shoot some stuff. I know I say a couple of my guys, well, a few of my guys, we do a photo shoot every year in, in this shop just for just for motivational purposes and stuff. And, uh, and my guys have got a great portfolio and... You know, they're really into it. So I wouldn't mind, um, yeah, doing a bit of that myself eventually and, and, and hope and get behind the lens and, and, and shooting some of their amazing work. Excellent. Sounds good. I mean, look, I think, yeah, yeah I was only with you a short period of time, mate, but I feel like, you know, I've spoke to you, I've spoke to James, I've spoke to all the guys on the group, but I've spoke to a few people individually as well. And, uh, you know, I travel all over the world, as you know, and sometimes you meet people and then you, but I've, I felt really close to you guys. It's one of those trips as well. <clears throat> I was just planning some trips to Bangkok and Dubai um, for October, November, and they're kind of like back to back, but you're lo looking at the days when you finish work to the days when you can fly back. Um, I can remember the last night and then I was meeting Trevor the day we had a three day the Thursday. I weren't ready to go home. I, I felt really at home there in Brisbane. Um, I think we'd done a, the, the nice week we'd had, but the, the general place just felt really homely. You just felt like home from home. And uh, I can understand why so many people up sticks and, and get out there if, if the things aren't going brilliant over here and you want a new yeah. bike, you've got no ties. And then I can understand why people do that. Uh, before I ask you some quick fire questions, what was your most memorable part of the week that we had, or the few days that we had together? What's the one thing that stuck with you that you kind of thought, wow, that's just changed the way I do stuff? Oh, just one thing. Um, look, you know, I, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed watching, you know, everybody, you know, I, I just watched, you know, light bulb moments. There were so many as well. I mean, you know, you say it was a pretty intense, I mean, we, we, with you there, it was a pretty intense four days. We, we got an awful lot, an awful lot covered. But yeah, as I say, I, like I said before, I think that that, that that's sort of, you know, the affirmation uh, that you were saying, you know, that it, it, it's a performance, you know, we're, you're on stage, people are paying, you, you, you've got to make this, you know, worth their while. Uh, and, and yeah, you know, I think that was, uh, you know, it was just, just, yeah, just that affirmation that we needed, and um, but you know, like the rest of the team, I mean, we, you know, we, we still obviously, you know, we, we still talk a lot now, and and uh, you know, you get messages all the time from everybody. I mean, I think I think all of us, you know, sort of disclose stuff uh, in 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 after what seventy eight two hours or something like that stuff that I hadn't really spoke about 
<laughs> you know, as many of them in, in, in public ever sort of thing. So there's a real bond there and, and, and you know, that real f family team sort of bond there. But uh, And it's yeah, about the UK maybe a couple of weeks later um, with 13, 14 people. And you can't get it when you're doing it. And it, it happens halfway through it. And I think people are sat there waiting to do that bit, what we know we're talking about. The nerves are jangling, and I, I, you know, there's one guy who said I got a completely different story. But when I got up there, I told the most intimate story that I had to tell. It just yeah. came to, me, just took over my body. I went back yeah. in my mind. I'm going to tell you something different, and we never disclosed what that said. But we understand no. why we did that, and I want to reiterate it to you: is that those stories to tell that and to present those difficult stories that you have to tell. Whenever you're on stage, whenever you're feeling nervous, whenever you're in a stage or an exhibition where there's three people walking and there's 50 chairs, just three people sat there, was it is anything as hard as what you just had to do there? No. So no, this is no. And that allows yeah. you to express yourself and all of a sudden you start to get people to sit, to sit, to sit, and you build your audiences up that way. And that's why that, that process has done, mate. You know, but I thought you all did really well. Very emotional, as we said it were going to be. Um, but you all did so. We brought everyone together, you know, as I say, um, amazingly as well. You know, as yeah. difficult as it was, the outcome was, was phenomenal. We're going to finish off with some quick five questions. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Ask a why. Okay. Favourite food? Um, Thai, Thai food. Uh, Favourite drink? I'm a beer drinker, you know. Um, you know me. Um, I know that. I'm not <laughs> a nice craft dial will be fine, thanks. Favourite music besides my playlist? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, oh, so, uh, a band, probably the Happy Mondays, uh, you know, some old school Happy Mondays. And favourite destination? <laughs> Manchester, lad, you are, really. <laughs> well, you know, you, you can't say Ozzy Osbourne, can you? <laughs> um, I, I've seen the show, I'm going on a date with someone now, I not um, no, my um, favourite destination, Greece. I haven't been back since I met my wife. I can't wait to get back there, Greece. And if you could have one day with somebody you could fetch back from the past or future, anybody, who, who would you like to have an hour and a half with food and drink and music? Who would you like to have across from your table? Who's your ideal dinner date? A, a dinner date? Um, oh. Well, can I say someone like Salma Hayek, someone I used to fancy when I was growing up, sort of thing? Like, is that okay? Who? <laughs> Salma Hayek. <laughs> Do you remember her from Desperado? No. <laughs> Pick somebody else. Okay, somebody else. Um, oh. I no, tell you, yeah. no, Mark. No, you, you got you, that's that's me pick. That is. <laughs> Come on. A conversation is then. Who would you like to have a really good conversation with over a dinner? Uh, oh, you, so I'd love to have you back over, mate, for a dinner. Okay, there you go then. We're having that one, guys. It's a lot easier to say. Um, no, Mark, that's great to have you <laughs> here uh, on Barbara's Arms, mate. I enjoyed my week with you in Australia, and I'm sure we'll, our paths will cross again. Matt Rabone, uh, from, uh, originally from Birmingham, and a big Aston Villa fan up the villa. Um, over there, 27 years over in Australia. Great guy, great presenter, uh, great American crew presenter as well as Wall. Um, but here we go. He's having his favourite Thai food and he's doing all this. I mean, his favourite beer, which I know as I were finishing half of my beer, he'd finished his and he went, you want another one? And I was like, OK, um, I'll have another one. Um, we have got him listening to the Happy Mondays and he's doing all this in a fantastic Greek destination. And he's doing all this with amazing Simon Shaw. I'm in Greece. I'm having a beer. <laughs> Sounds all right, doesn't it? Fun. Fucking life can't get any better. <laughs> You've been on Barbara's Arms. Thank you very much, mate. Thanks, guys. Great to see you all. Look after yourself. Mark, it, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure, but I've definitely gone for the beer. Not in my way. See you later. <laughs> Gary, I hope to, hope to see you over here next time as well, mate. Look after yourselves, guys. No problem. Hopefully we'll be there soon, mate. We'll, we'll meet up somewhere. Sounds great. See you later, buddy. Well, good luck, buddy. Do you know yeah. what? You know what? Even then, it's still uh, Lifetime Achievement Awards. I've still got 50% of my creators to still achieve. 
and people still see me as an ideal dinner, yeah, ideal dinner date. No, I would. I've been away with you on an ideal dinner date, and I'd, I'd have had the bird I would particularly. Oh well, we'll not go on to that one. Um, we shall have a uh, salam and much better. It's Trevor, stop it. <laughs> um, great guest tonight, guys. Um, I love doing. You know, we do lots of English stuff. Um, I, I really do like going abroad on Barbara's Arms. I think we have been consistent at the show that's fetched you, you know, through the lockdown. And then we're out of lockdown now. We don't talk about how was it through a lot. It's gone. It's finished. We, we've moved forward. 91 episodes, over 10 million views. We're fetching you, hopefully, the best uh, people across the globe there that they're, they're interesting. They've got a story to tell and uh, we can share that and document it here on Barber's Arms, brought to you by Wall and the British Barbers Association. 2022 will see us reach our 100th anniversary show. And I'm sure, you know, when that's going to get up to, to nearer to December, we're going to have a, a, a fantastic evening on that as well. And, you know, I think for me, lots of people are watching. I know sometimes I don't comment because you, you're busy doing the show. And we know lots of people don't watch it live. It's a show that people watch afterwards. But every single one of you, wherever you are tonight, wherever you are tomorrow, in your shed, in your shop, on your way home, driving into work, when your missus has gone out shopping, you watch us before match at day, whatever you do, and however you watch us, we appreciate everybody's views here on the arms. And, um, we, you know, without you, I can't sit here very proud on 91 episodes and say we've had over 10 million views. So without everybody watching and tuning in, whatever time you do that, you know, we really appreciate every single one of you. So thank you very much. Uh, great show tonight. Matt Rabone from Australia and uh, Lauren Davis from Texas. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, icons within the industry what they're doing is th the top level and that's what it's all about showing people and interviewing people who uh, are setting the standards across the globe um hope you've had uh, a, a nice week at work this week uh oh yeah and loads of dough tomorrow and sunday if you're opening it's the fucking business season this is it september through to december this is where you've got to set your targets staff training motivate people being a better version of yourself as a boss and making sure your staff are the best version of themselves leading into the really busy quarter. You know, there will be some passengers left behind now. Uh, energy bills are going up. The people will drop away. The strongest will survive. To be relentless, you've got to be professional every single day. Have a great weekend, guys. I'm going to pass you over to Gaz. But adios from me. And we will see you on the 16th with the Fellowship Takeover. See you then. Uh, thank you very much, Mrs. I'm sure. As Sam has just said, we will be back on the 16th. Please join the Fellowship Takeover, Ken Picton, Carolina Sorders. Uh, we will be back two weeks after that, I think, It'd be a couple of weeks after that. I know everybody, we've been having some feedback. We need to know when the shows are coming. We will, you know, we are going to get those in the diary for you. and We will definitely give you notice. Thank you for all the people that have watched far and wide, especially all the followers of Mark who've got up in the middle of the night to watch him on the Barber's Arms. Um, the thing with this community that we brought together uh, and hopefully is we love you. It's been great. And especially from myself and Simon, officially from Instagram and Facebook, we, I'm just going to share this tonight, 10.3 million views in Instagram and Facebook. How good's that? Amazing. Fantastic. And that's come from the producer, to, producer tonight. So next one is 16th of September. Please join us. They bring you some great guests, some huge guests on. We love you. And we'll see you in two weeks' time. Good night. God bless. See you guys soon. Yeah. Yeah.